I have you read Tiffany Haddish's book? Uh, Last Black Unicorn. Yes. I have not actually. You know what's funny is that when it came out, I searched for it everywhere and couldn't find it. Dude, um, this book is. I read it uh, recently. It's a really short read, and it is fantastic. She is, of course, she's Tiffany Haddish through and through. Um, yeah. And then when you hear her story, dude, you're like, whoa! I just yeah. I just I did not expect interviews it. of her talking about some of uh, the details in the book and just her experiences growing up and just, it's, it's so, um, like really just in, like flat out inspiring just that she went from that to this. Yeah, and dude, her stepfather positivity. legit put a hit out on her family. That's crazy. That is insanity to deal with. <laughs> um, I don't even know who I'd call to put out a hit. Yeah. Family. Right. Right. It's insanity. But like, Literally, when you, you, you just got to check it out. It, it's really good. But one of the things that I took away from it, and I realized that I, I personally hadn't been doing it, and I don't know about you, um, she was like, have fun in everything you're doing. If you're not having fun, why do it? Uh, yeah. And I was like, that's a really good point. I don't think I've been having fun lately. It's just kind of like I've been doing it or doing things because like, I sure, have you to just, do them. Yeah, just dealing with shit. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, that's just that's what I wanted to set the mood with. I'm trying yeah, to like, fun. let's just have some fun, man. And by the way, I was shocked at how much there was to talk about with this episode. Dude, I did not, think dude, <laughs> there was going to be so much to talk about with this. The moment I realized what the plot was, and I kind of remember the episode, I was like, holy shit, this is kind of. This is crazy. This is pure insanity. I was just like, what the fuck I is this episode? paused and I said, ugh. Like, literally, like, I said the word ugh. Yeah. Just because I couldn't take how stupid and misogynistic and patronizing yeah. the writing in this episode was. I was just... There was one moment I, I really... I just stopped and I was like, bruh. And I was like, <laughs> oh, hey, that's useful in this. <laughs> <laughs> when this ball is What up, bros? What up, bros? And welcome to Bro Meets World. What up, Bro Meets World? Your boy meets world fan cast. Uh, welcome to episode 34. I'm Siege. And I'm your boy, Tony Curtis. Tony Kurt. Tony Kurt. Hey, yo. How you doing? I'm feeling good, man. I'm chilling. I'm ready to talk about this episode because it is batshit crazy. Oh, that is like an understatement. I can't even. I literally can't even. Um... Yeah. Just, just, just so offended by so much of it. <laughs> yes, as you should be. Again, yeah. I, it's crazy that of all the things, this is one episode where I was like, oh, so we just straight up fuck boys. That's just what we're doing? Yeah, and just... <laughs> Just, just treating. I've never seen just such like a blatantly like treating women. At one point, they compare women to chicken yes! and uh, yes, and whatever the else there was for lunch. And I just, I, I was so blown away by it. It was that, meatloaf or chicken. Yeah, and I was like, you're talking about people, guys. Like you're talking about women. I like. I noted the different times that they called the girls. Which, by the way, like we'll get into it in just a second. I'll do roll call, but like. They call the girl, he calls one of the girls my assignment. Yeah. And I was like, are you kidding me with this? <laughs> it's it's just all, it's all just not good. I, I and, and even like, whatever conclusion they think they came to at the end of this yes! episode. No, no. <laughs> Thank you. Again. It's like, I feel like this episode was one of the ones where like a bunch of guys wrote the script and they were like patting themselves on the back. And then someone like... Maybe like a female intern looked it over and was like, "What are you trying to say with this?" Yeah, and they gave it like one line of dialogue. Like, all right, it's fixed. <laughs> it's just, it's just. I, I mean, let's just dive in because I want to talk specific. Okay, okay, okay. So tell me about it. Tell me about it. Uh, this is season two, episode eleven, "The Beard," which I want to get into that, but like, why it's titled "The Beard." But anyway, um. Things get messy when Sean gets asked out by two different girls at the same time. Because Sean is a slave to his hormones and a straight white male, he comes up with a plan to have Linda's cake and eat Stacy too. 
Sean proposes that Corey go out with one of the girls, doesn't matter which one, while he dates the other. Corey, in a desperate need to date someone other than his hand, agrees with the plan and starts to date Linda. But as Eric points out, the plan only works as long as Stacy and Sean keep dating. And since this is high school, that's unlikely to happen. While trying to push Stacy closer to Sean, Linda assumes Corey is making a move on Stacy and the plan begins to unravel. The boys end up single, but at least they're fuckboys together. In a B plot, Alan buys Amy a van. I'm so excited to talk about Amy Aaron. and yeah. Alan. I'm yeah. so excited to talk about the boys. I'm so excited to talk about literally everything. All right, so one of the things, like in my first thoughts notes, I wrote, if Topanga is not in the episode, I assume we're going to mishandle female issues. <laughs> well, I will have to say that even though there was a, uh, gosh, Miss Topanga so much, um, Amy does kind of stick up for herself a little bit more in this episode, which I really liked. Oh, yeah, no, I was going to like, especially our history, you and I, history with Amy, I was really glad that we get a little bit more shade, like just a just a tiny bit more depth of Amy. Well, I mean, Alan really tries to put a stop to any kind of development she has. <laughs> yeah, and then oh, oh my God, like the Alan, oh God. All right, so let's let's actually do this. Do you want to talk about Alan and Amy first, or do you want to talk about the boys? Well, let's do the roll call. All right, let's do roll call. Roll call. In this episode, we have Stacy, and go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, um, both Stacy and Linda is that their name? Lisa? Linda is the next one. Yeah, both Stacey and Linda, um, I I am DB them, and neither of them really did much, but they did, like, a bunch of just television side roles. So, like, you might be watching an episode of a 90s show and might see them as, like, a one-episode kind of situation. So I thought that was really – we get a lot of those type of actors on Boy Meets World. Exactly. Especially the girl who plays Stacey. Like, I looked at her, and I was like, you've been in – like looks so familiar, right? Yeah, You're, like, in a 90s sitcom type thing. Um, yeah. And then the other person that I like, I have to talk about is Roy. We meet Roy. Roy, yeah, the boy who is directly hitting on Linda. Oh yes, Roy. Of course, yeah. That's that's an interesting. That wow. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I want I want to talk about Roy. Let's start off with Roy. All right, all right. Let's start <laughs> off. So obviously, we have this whole situation where Corey is babysitting yeah yeah it's baby like that's what he says he describes it himself he's tupperware which there's so much wrong with this dynamic but continue <laughs> i you know what i feel like can we start actually from the beginning of the episode okay okay like, you know, like, we're yeah. jumping all around because it's just like it's here's the thing there's so much to to go off of yeah you know, like, like there's so, so much and um so we're talking about Corey and Sean, and they're eating meatloaf, and they're eating chicken in the cafeteria, and Sean can't decide which girl he wants to go out with, and then Sean has this brilliant idea of just like, well, I, I picked chicken, the meatloaf, because I figured if I wanted some chicken, I could have yours. Eureka, we can do that with people. <laughs> yep, yeah, all right, so like a little clarity. Um, Sean was like, I can't decide which girl, because both girls hit on um, Sean using Corey as like a messenger and Corey's feeling overlooked. And I was like, for, for once I was just like, Oh, we're in school learning stuff again. I feel like it's been forever since we've done that. Yeah. And then we got to see <laughs> Feeney's class, which I really like too. Um, exactly. And we're talking about things that are relevant. I like the whole super situation. relevant. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just really interesting because I feel like when Sean comes up with this plan to have Corey babysit or like, fake date one of the girls so he has time to like so no one else takes her so she doesn't go off the market because (laughs) he changes his mind jesus christ um there's there's this thing part of Corey i think that's kind of super down to do it i think he's looking like you said he's feeling overlooked and he's feeling like you know what i even though i think this is kind of a bad idea it's it's I think he's liking the attention. I think even when that I say he passes him a note in the beginning of class and he thinks it's for him for just a second, he feels so much um like adoration. Yeah, he goes he gets so much worth out of it. He goes, Look, Sean, you're not the only one who and then she's like, Pass it to Sean. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I think that's partly why like he agrees to go because I feel like Corey the entire episode is like, oh well, I just went along with this for my friend. I was just trying to help my friend out. Corey, you were a piece of shit from beginning. Well, so actually, thing. I will say that 
the, the way that it's set up, at least, is I was like, Corey didn't approach her. Like, or at least it didn't come off as Corey approached her with the intent to directly ask her out. You know, like when, like when we meet, when he Corey, does fall for her by accident. Yeah, yes. that's what I'm saying. Well, not even does he fall for her by accident, but like their whole uh, setup, like of him and Linda, happens to be Linda is dealing with Roy, so bringing him back to Roy, mm-hmm. and Corey just kind of tells Roy to go away. But Oh, so what I was going to say, this is the part where I paused because he this is what Roy said. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> yeah, that it's just I I mean I can see why Corey seems so appealing. After dealing with that girl yeah. because they're around <laughs> so much yeah, some douchebag men. And in Corey's defense, like he really wasn't trying to fall for uh Linda. Um he wasn't trying to like ruin the plan, but he still initially agreed to go along with it. No, like, I agree the that the entire he... time he's com- He's say doing like, well, I'm just doing this for Sean. So he is agreeing to like hold a girl. I don't well, know. That's, well, what I'm just... saying is, if you re- if you watch that scene, how it plays out, and again, this could just be that it's bad writing, but the way that it's played out, it seems as if Corey actually came to Linda's defense. Now it totally, turns out totally. that he he may have approached her or even been like watching the situation because of the agreement that he had with Sean. That's the only reason he goes up because he sees a guy hitting on her and he's like, no, I need to make sure she stays off the market. That's what exactly. That's what I'm saying. But the connection that they have and the reason why they even go to, it's kind of her being like, Oh wow, Corey, thank you. You know, she, he didn't she gets really into him. Yeah, um, again, like, because super uh, into him because she's not, he's not Roy, <laughs> and like Roy was literally if if your options are Roy or Sean, uh, yeah, Corey's like, oh, maybe he's not that bad. Well, and it's funny because even when Corey is starting to like when Lisa's obviously hitting on them, like they go to Chubby's. And well, I, do they go to Chubby's together, or does he just find her at Chubby's? No, no, no they go to Chubby's together. But before, yeah, and... wait, 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 really, really quick. Oh, go ahead. Go before ahead. that, all I was gonna say is, um, when when dealing with Roy, there are a few things that I wanted to note. One, Corey actually does a really smooth job at like turning the situation. Like he goes, like the whole thing he says where he's like, "Oh, yo, Roy, you gotta see this. This boy is making a complete fool of himself by hitting on a girl that's not interested." I was like, "Oh shit, Corey." Like that's like <laughs> yeah, I kind of burned him a bit. Like I was like, oh, I didn't know Corey had it in them to just burn someone to their face like that. Exactly. So there was that, and then the part that really bothered me, and this is like where, again, I've talked about. I've been listening to the Bechdel test. I've our cast. Uh, I've been just. I listened to Tiffany Haddish's book. I'm being more mindful of like how females are perceived in a space, and. Roy straight up takes Corey's, like, Roy ignores Linda's rebuff and takes Corey's word that Linda's not interested. Well, I will have to say that, like, it's funny because just watching it, I was like, is Linda not interested? Like, it wasn't until, like, he went away that she was like, oh, creepy guys are always hitting on me. But when she first, like, was talking to him, I was like, I couldn't tell if she wanted no. to, if she was, like, like a boredom thing. Like, well, I guess if no one else is asking me, I'll, I'll go out with you kind of thing. I didn't know it was this thing where she's just like, wow, thank you for saving me from him. So, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm projecting because, like, again, the moment Roy opens his mouth, I'm like, ugh, she's not interested. You know, like, that's like that's where I saw it. But maybe, maybe it is a little bit unsung. All I'm saying Because she is- seems like she just wants to go out. Like, this girl seems like she's... She just wants to date. She seems very 
excited about the idea of dating, at least from what I saw at her at Chubby's with Corey. See, I disagree. I think that we are placing a lot of the fact that, you know, as you're allowed to do, she found someone who was sweet and nice to her. She, you know, Corey does a lot of really nice, genuine things that make him appealing. And I don't blame her. And again, it's one of these things where it's like, why is she required to hold out for Sean because she asked Sean out earlier and Sean hasn't gotten back to her. You know what I mean? It's like, that's like, she, her agency. Yeah, at no point does Corey be like, does Corey say to Sean, well, let's, like, what does she want? Like, that never comes up. And you know what? That's the theme of the whole episode. What does she want is a question that's not asked but assumed the entire episode. They, that's a really good uh, way of putting that. Because that's what bothered me is her agency is completely taken away by the men in this story. Again, Corey's like, Jim she's yeah. Yeah. Corey's like, she's not interested. And Roy's like, oh, you're lost. Turns and he's like nasty to her. You're but like lost. takes Corey's advice and then walks away. And you're like, what the fuck was that about? You're lost. I don't <laughs> know that I would have the goal to say that to anyone. <laughs> well, you're not Roy. <laughs> yeah, that's that's very true. That's very true. Roy, you know what? Roy was fooling himself. He had those hair. He had, you know, the denim on denim. Roy knew he could do no wrong. Yeah, it was just, like, the moment I saw him, I was just like, wow, they found the douchiest kid they could possibly find. They did find find the douchiest kid. What do you think Roy's doing now? Roy's definitely, like, I don't know, he's one of, like, a... Do you mean the actor that plays Roy, or just the Roy's of the the world? The Roy's of the world. Like, what is Roy doing now? He probably invested in Bitcoin. They're at a day club in Vegas right now, bro. (laughs) You know exactly where He's at a day club in Vegas talking about Bitcoin and why you really should be into cryptocurrency. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um... So they go to Chubby's for the first time, and you didn't mention this in the roll call. We meet Chubby for the first time. Oh, we do meet Chubby for the – again, my whole thing is with roll calls, I'm really terrible with the adults. I'm more focused on the kids. Sure, sure. But sure. Like, well, and also, I, we've been to Chubby's before, so it's that assumption that, like, did we meet him already? Yeah. Um, but I think this is our first time meeting him. And you know what's super funny? I am I looked over his IMDb. He's been in a ton of stuff. He's always just, like, a one um, phrase – one sentence person, but he was in like Jacob's Ladder. He was in Ace Ventura, Speed, Independence Day, um, Low Down, Dirty Shame. He just has like this he, cousin Skeeter, just like this crazy <laughs> extensive film uh, video uh, filmography. Yeah, um, bunch of TV shows, um, but it's always just one character in in like one episode or something like that, or just a one phrase character. But you yeah, know what he reminds not, me of? His look of reminds me of like um, Futurama. The the uh, pizza owner that Fry used to work for in Futurama. Okay, sure, sure, I can see that. Yeah, that's just kind of what he reminds me of. It's the same kind of like, I own a restaurant, nothing's up to health code. I was like, Chubby's probably no, has like a No, they deep. don't even have a menu at this place, <laughs> and they scoff at anyone who asks for a menu. Who would eat here? <laughs> uh, teenage kids. Corey doesn't even say that the food is good. They're like, "Is the food good?" And they're like, "Well, it's a rat hole." <laughs> well, yeah, there's Why that. And then he's here? like, a, um, "When he's talking to Stacy, she's like, I 'I don't even like turkey burgers.'" And he's like, "It's not, it's not turkey. It's not don't even turkey. <laughs> like what?" But again, it's because they're teenage kids and they're allowed to hang out and meet somewhere and touch each other. That's all Yo, kids want. Can- Yo, we ate at some shitty places in high school too, just because they were cheap and close. Like, do exactly. you remember? Was it the pizza place? What was it? The dollar pizza place that was walking distance? Um, I oh, I haven't thought about that in forever. Yeah, it was a shitty place that had shitty pizza, but it was a dollar, and it was in walking distance from high school, so we always went, and it was terrible. <sighs> uh, man, I seriously haven't thought of it forever, so I'm I remember what you're talking about. I just have no details about yeah. anything else. Yeah, that's it's hilarious. Just, but I just think that all kids have that place of just like, well, we can afford this. It's exactly. close enough to you know where we hang out. Um, and I, I think it's just it's it's that's why they kind of settle for places that maybe don't actually serve turkey. You know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then also, I really, I highly doubt Chubby being Chubby is like checking ID. I feel like this is a place where you could also like order alcohol if you wanted to. You know well, what I mean? Well, cons- 
considering that they serve all of their soda in those little plastic cups that they used to have at Pizza Hut, uh-huh. I sincerely doubt they have anything other than Coke and not even Diet Coke, just less regular Coke. Uh, also, like, even when he gives, uh, when he gives Stacy the Diet Coke, or, you know, her, his version of Diet Coke, which is just half of a regular Coke, um... Oh wait, no, it was Linda who who he did that to. I was like, what kind of warm soda is this? Like you just know it's that thing wasn't been refrigerated. Sitting out. Yes. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> oh god. I'm glad they never paid because like it's just it's disgusting. Yeah. It's um it, 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 well, I will say this, that Corey, like you said, he's very chivalrous the the time. He's just genuinely trying to help her. He's yeah. not flirting with her, coming on to her hardcore, and she has a genuine attraction to someone who's decent to her. All that is all well and good, until you remember the reason why Corey's doing it. Yeah. I th- but I think what it is, what's confusing to me is, or not confusing, it's just it's murky, because Corey is doing this. Like, Corey is engaging with her Corey is constantly bringing up sean all these things because Corey is aware of the agreement that he has with sean however we talk about oh go ahead ahead. the only thing i'm going to say is however it takes away again linda's agency because linda is completely unaware of all of this and she's just connecting with someone this is again someone who's been nice to her someone who's helping her like order from chubby's she finds him attractive. For as far as she's concerned, this is a good date. This is a good person. She doesn't know that the guy's been set up to lie to her. <laughs> exactly. And that's like it's one of those things too where it bothers me because you're not wrong that the whole reason why Corey's doing this is because of his agreement with Sean. However, Corey's actually pretty passive when it comes to their connection. She's the one who kind of leads it. She's the one who's like, why are you standing over there? She's the one who kisses him. You know what I mean? I don't think Corey actually likes her, by the way. He says that, oh, I like Linda. I don't think he does. I think he just likes that Linda likes him. He, there at no point does he like, seem to like, like, she seems very into everything that he's giving off. But yeah. at no point is she just, he's just like, yeah, yeah, you are really cool. I do like hanging out with you. You're fun. You're like, whatever it is about you, I like it. The only thing he responds to is her liking him. That's a really good point because even like a little bit later with um, Sean and Stacy, they at least like the reasons why they're not working out makes sense. They've gone to a movie, you know. They have different interests. We learn a little bit about Stacy. She likes. We don't know any of Linda's interests to know if it's something that vibes with Corey's. We don't learn any of that. Exactly. That's a really good point. Um, So you wanted to talk about Sean. I just wanted to talk about Sean. This whole this whole concept because like. I feel that obviously like Sean has always been kind of a dummy and he's always kind of treated women like this. So I don't know why I'm surprised by it, but I just felt like he was just kind of the worst version of himself. Like, you know, he's referring to women as actual pieces of meat, like (laughs) meatloaf and chicken. Which one are you going to date? Literal pieces of meat. That's a really... Literal... Yeah. Uh, Whichever one comes up to me first. Wait, no, I changed my mind. Sean literally does not care. He's just like at an all you can eat buffet and he wants it all. That's what I mean. Like, so I don't even know what his main motivation is here because I don't know what he's getting out of these relationships. It doesn't seem like he's hooking up. They're just going on dates. Maybe they're making out a little bit, but like, he's just like, it's a name. It's a girl, a girl, any yeah. girl will do. There's doesn't seem to be any, like, I'm looking for someone to vibe with. I'm looking for someone I'm like, it's just a girl that said yes. Let's so what it. we're going to do uh, at this point is I'm going to overshare a little bit about my history with family advice, um, which I feel could lead into uh, Sean's character, which I remember my uncle um, had come to stay with me and my dad uh, when I lived in North Carolina and he was going through some stuff. He was going through a divorce and all this other stuff. But his solution to all of that was to get back out there and start dating. And he was like, CJ, if you find a girl, all your problems will be solved. You just need to find a woman and everything will fall into place. And I was smart enough as a kid to be like, that is dumb advice. Um, And there's a lot of this whole idea that 
uh, people are starting to say, which is that women are not therapy for men. Like they're not, <laughs> they're not your yeah. problem solvers. Uh, but a lot of men are taught that. And I feel that knowing where Sean comes from, I could really see like his dad or his uncles or someone just being like, a, oh, once you have a woman, everything's solved. Yeah, I mean, I, I do see that. I mean, I, I will say that I don't see him being like, oh, I have a woman, like in relaxing, like huh, at last. It's like I have a woman, but I kind of want this other woman. Well, yeah, I feel like it's 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 not like finding a single woman solves your problem. It's just that women, like the accumulation of women, solidifies yourself as a man. You know what Do I mean? Do you think this is Sean's way of kind of making up for a lack of just affection he's getting at home? That's possible. Like he's he like obviously like like he has Corey and the Matthews, which is gonna develop even deeper obviously as the season goes on um but yeah it just seems like he's really searching for some kind of uh, uh approval some kind of honestly uh, i don't even think it's that deep i feel that sean is a horny teenager and that's where they're yeah, putting you, it i feel like right. that's it. You're right if it's Corey, Corey wants the attention Corey's the one who's just like oh you like me then yeah let's do this um, but for Sean, Sean is way more controlled by his hormones. And like I said, I just feel with him, it's really not that deep. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Hey, there was one thing I, f I wanted to bring up. Um, when Corey and Linda are at Chubby's, um, Frankie and Joey are there. Yes. <laughs> and Frankie and Joey are like, see these <laughs> girls, Frankie's like, you got, you girls want to dance? And they're like, Sure even though there's hardly any music playing, no one else is dancing, and they're by a, what seems to be a, a video game. Um, <laughs> they're like, yeah, sure, we'll dance. And then Joey looks at him and goes, all right, start dancing then. Start dancing for us, you whores. I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But yeah. like, but no, that's throughout the episode, it. men are just shitty to women at every turn. Thank you. There is no treatment of women in a positive way until the epilogue. Uh, which I want to get into a little bit later. But, all right, so let's, you know what? We've been talking a lot about how the boys have treated these women. Let's talk about these women. Let's talk about Stacey and Linda. I don't even know what to say. That's what I mean. I The only thing I will say is that at the end of the episode, once they realize what's going on, they seem to immediately, like, there's at no point are they against each other. Like, they both realize yes. that these boys are shitty. And I really did like that. I didn't yes. I didn't want them to, like, fight over either of them. Um, and I was just really happy to see that both of them came to the realization that, like, no, screw these guys. We're out. Exactly. I, you know, I will say that I, I wanted to bring up a few things because, one, Stacy is written as... I don't know, like the way that she was written or the way she comes off. I'm trying to figure out like a, a way to say this, but it's like I didn't like the way she was written. As you said, we don't know much about her. But Who, Stacy or Linda? Stacy. Like when we like when the when we first see her, uh, when we first see her, of course she's like a little rude to Corey, asking him to pass the note. And then when we see her again, and her and Sean are fighting. Um, just the way that she's written, it's very much like she's difficult. You know what I mean? And you know what? I, I didn't get that vibe at all. I got this vibe of her being a very um more mature person. All right. Like when she's talking about like, hey, you know, like, do we have to see a movie that's just so just like nonstop violence? Can we maybe see something that's like maybe a romantic foreign film or something like that? Like she just seemed like she's just interested in something that's a lot more adult. And because of that, I think she comes across as if she's losing patience with a lot of people because she is mature. It's the vibe I got anyway. You know what? That's a very good way of putting that. And that's, I mean, I like your interpretation of it because the way I saw it was especially like the scene with her and Chubbies. It's very much like um she always seems she has every right yes. to be frustrated no she does chubbies she's like i just want this food why can't you give it to me what the <laughs> hell is this restaurant <laughs> no again i don't i'm not saying that she's wrong i'm saying that the way she's written especially when you compare it to submissive soft-spoken linda true yeah you know what i mean yeah. It's like, a, you know what it is? That's what it is. It's like the, I can't think of like the two things, but it's like the Mary and the Shrew or something like that. You know what I mean? It's just like, she's written almost as a Shrew-like character. And I'm not saying that she is. I just feel like that's 
the personality that they wrote for her. Okay. Okay. I mean, we, I mean, I can agree. We, I think we've talked about this plenty of times that other than Topanga and sometimes Amy, like women ain't their strong suit on this show. So like, I wouldn't be surprised if they wrote her that way. And I guess that's kind of like what I wanted to discuss because you're always talking about how they write women uh, in this series. And this is just another example of them not even trying to be like and you know how i get more vibe of that even from not even just from the way they write women it's the way they write men when the men do something that's super offensive but it's not a learning point it's not whatever it's just a joke it's just something that's like a kind of agreed on something that's not really addressed these kind of like really sexist undertone comments that get had and forgotten um that's what lets me know that there's some issues going on with with gender well yeah because at the end as you said when they point out and they're like hey you're treating us like property like we're just possessions or whatever and they walk off and everyone's um you know the whole i do like that the whole restaurant has heard what's going on and they're just like you guys are scum like like, like, yeah Corey and sean had every opportunity to learn their lesson and they still never got to that point where they were like yo we were, we're really wrong we shouldn't have treated them this way the no. only time Corey apologizes is he's like uh when they confront the the girls confront the boys and Corey, like really passively says like a, oh i'm so sorry no you're sorry you got caught Corey. you're not even sorry that you did this well so, what i was gonna say is that after that big embarrassing moment where you could learn a lesson what the boys walk away from is Sean's like, well, actually, you're way more dangerous than I would have suspected. And Corey's like, oh, you see me as a threat now? Yeah, great. We're awesome. Corey says, <laughs> so you're telling me I lost my girlfriend, but for the first time, my friend, my best friend respects me? And Sean's like, yeah. So the <laughs> only time he got respect was when he was treating a woman like trash. And Sean's like, yeah, again, as I said, they were like, we're fuck boys together. <laughs> yeah and it's just it's just the weirdest i don't know who i'm supposed to be rooting for in this i don't know who like i'm supposed to be like all of this is just <sighs> yeah it's very very problematic um do you have anything else <laughs> about about the their whole dynamic this whole sitch about the boys um i do think that even though Corey, because i i do want to say that I don't think Corey was intentionally trying to be a piece of shit. No, I, I don't think, think that, he was. Yeah, and I think in both circumstances, both of the girls liked him because they saw he was nice. And if he wasn't so wrapped up in trying to help Sean, I think he could have gotten a girlfriend very easily. Well, that's um, what I'm saying. When he's not trying, Corey is like, he he's... It's one of those things to where Corey is a nice person guy and i don't mean that like in the negative context of like, oh a nice guy Corey's someone who can be considerate and can be funny and is attractive and you know all these other things so it makes sense that girls are like oh you know you're not the obvious choice but when i really sit and look at you um there's something there but he almost well, always messes it up he always messes it up because he's trying to impress the girls. But in this both circumstances, he approached both of the girls on Sean's behalf. And because he wasn't, like, trying to get with them, he wasn't this nervous, sweaty, swallowing, like, mouthwash kid anymore. He he was, like, just regular and cool and talked to them like people. And it's so funny how when you talk to women like people, they respond to you. <laughs> it Isn't turns that out that... Strangest damn thing. It turns out that women really respond being spoken to like they're human beings. <laughs> I just, I'm, yeah. Wait, I wait, just... wait. You did remind me of a, of a moment that I honestly, I laughed so hard at, which is when they were like calling Corey a creep or like, you know, they assumed that he was putting on moves or whatever. He nays. <laughs> it goes mad. Mad. <laughs> no, I I will say, even though like we're we're giving Corey and Sean a really hard time, they're hilarious. Oh, like yeah, that's the only thing that makes this work is that they're so funny. Like, yeah. and and that's what allows you as the audience to kind of overlook a lot of this because both 
Ben and Ryder are really so damn charming that no matter what they do, you're kind of on board for it. So here's the thing. I do not want to give them a pass. I think the first time, the first few times I watched this, I did give them a pass. And because of that, I'm like, nah, I'm holding your feet to the fire. This is fucked up. But I will Oh, we give shouldn't give them a pass. <laughs> but yeah, that's 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 why it's kind of that murkiness is there because even though like Corey's low key doing a shitty thing, he's so he's so genuine, and you just you want him to succeed, and uh, it's a, it's it's just very problematic for both them and us as well. Yeah, exactly. And I do like that. Um, <laughs> I do like th- that uh, we have this little side story for no real reason of Frankie and Joey. Um, I feel like again. This is, like, something where now we would have a web series of, like, their antics. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. They're the Phyllis and Kevin of the show. They're the... the Yeah. The, the side characters. They're the, the Gunther. They're, the, they're just the ones there, just kind of comic relief. Sometimes they play a part. Sometimes they don't. Um, but I, I, like, I like them so much. I have to say, whenever I see them, I get excited to have them on there because they always make me laugh. Well, I feel that the writers do too because, again, their, their storyline makes no sense. It's not really relevant to the plot. But we just get these little vignettes of them. Like, for example, when Frankie's like, oh, it's Friday. Don't forget to clean out your locker. And you see, like, this little... Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's no reason for it. You're absolutely There's right. There's no it's reason for there that. There is a joke. Also, I, I looked at it, and I was like, I would like to think those two boys stuck in the locker, uh, they become friends. Like, they have, like, this history. Yeah, I mean, oh, you spend a lot of time with someone. Thick and thin, bro. You share a locker <laughs> with... I've never shared a locker with someone, but I have to imagine that you just... It, hours together, <laughs> and, like, just breathing each other's breath. Ugh. <laughs> okay, so let's go into the other problematic story. Uh, Amy and the van. Who? Okay, so let's start from... All right, at the very beginning of this episode... <laughs> You've been Amy is looking this. at go this, yeah, looking at this pamphlet for for vans, and she's like, "All right, this is what I want." Corey and Eric are trying to get her to buy a motorcycle or Ferrari or something dumb. Um, and Alan seems really supportive of it. He's like, "You know what? Why don't you think about it? Walk around the house with the magazine, just kind of think it over." As soon as she leaves, Alan's like, "All right, kid." Yeah. Which I actually thought was kind of a funny joke because to me that seems like he was like don't 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 tell anybody I said that yeah and to me that just seemed like a very dad thing to say like a very dad like don't tell oh, your mother I made that joke we're <laughs> completely talking about sex like again this oh a hundred percent yeah and I just I just thought well, that was like, like really rush and do it and then women they need you to take your time um, and it's just like a, yeah it's it's terrible. I just, I, in that moment, in like that one moment, I was like, oh, I kind of like Alan. Just because to me, he just seemed like, uh, like when he, when he was like, don't tell anybody I said that. I'm just joking around. He just seemed very human in that moment. But then he completely ruined it with the rest of the episode. Well, and so... the moment he walks in with the car, that's when I knew I was like, no, nah, he fucked up. Well, no. So I immediately took it as I didn't like Alan from the very beginning, because even though I I will agree with you that the whole joke part is very much like a dad joke, like a Hey, Hey type situation that I expect from Alan, the whole, first of all, I think when he starts it off and you inserted the clip, when he starts it off with, let me tell you something about women. I'm like, Oh, this is going to be stupid. (laughs) Whatever it is, ignore everything. Cause it's, well, when he comes back in with the car too, it's really funny. Cause he says something like, uh, like behold me or yeah. something like that, and yeah, I'm just exactly. like, uh, Alan, you you are about to ruin everything. Whisperer. I know everything about women. Oh Remember my goodness! Remember all the things I told you earlier. You're about to be so impressed. Your mom's basically going to try to blow me with happiness because of what I just did. <laughs> yeah, she does not. She does not try to blow him with happiness. You know what it is? It's also one of those things where it's funny because when you look at it in the very beginning. It's played for a joke that women be indecisive. You know, it's just like, a, oh, she yeah. can't make up her mind. The next scene, Sean can't decide which girl to go out with. Yeah. So it's just like, a, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, women be indecisive and men take action. But the whole storyline is how Sean can't make up his mind. That's very true. I wonder if they were conscious of that. No, they weren't. I can tell you right now. This is, <laughs> this one, it's one of those things where it was, it was just hypocrisy. It's one of those things where um, it was 
kind of written to be a statement on women and and all this. Again, I don't even know why. Yeah, I just I I don't know why. I don't know what Allen's confidence was that he just felt like he was really hitting it out the park so much with this. Um, because he specifically t- told the guys like women change their mind, like like <laughs> they need time to think. Why would you? He was like, men rush. That's the problem. Exactly. And, but, <laughs> he rushed into buying it, and I don't know if he was saying that women were bad for thinking and that they should rush, and that's why he went and got the car. Is that what he was trying to teach the boys? That's what I'm saying. It's just it doesn't it doesn't make sense. We're just like there's no use in trying to make sense of it. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, have you ever given someone a gift that you were like, I'm sure they're going to like this and they were like, "Oh, I didn't want this." Oh yeah, absolutely. I will say that. I'm like also I've I've done that before, but I'm usually really really like I either won't give you a gift or I'll give you a gift that I thought you want. I will not try to buy something for you that i that you were talking about getting does that yeah make, like i'm not going to try to do that for you because i sure, hate sure. when people do that for me i've had so many exes be like oh you spoke about this and i bought it for you and i was like oh well like you didn't know anything about what i wanted or maybe i was just saying something uh you know i was just saying it but i didn't really mean it and yeah, and I think that's like kind of what Alan did. And I think that's a very human, like I'm sure that happens, like that I'm not faulting him for at all. Um, it's more so the way he kind of reacts to Amy's reaction. Like at no point is he like, oh, I'm so sorry. He's just like, what are you even talking about? You told me you wanted this. Like, <laughs> I'm, he- I'm telling you right now what you wanted. And she's like, well, guy. You, you have no idea what I wanted. Well, that's what I'm saying. I am actually mad because this is a huge purchase. First of all, she's been very practical with it. She was like, you know what? I think about soccer and the way that we camp and all this other stuff. I'm she, Well, she said she needs it for work for the art gallery. Yeah, I which I was like, oh, doing that. <laughs> we still, we're still at the art gallery. Good for her. Um, but watching all of that, do you know how upset I would be? And actually, I am upset if I'm ever in a relationship or even with roommates or something, and we've talked about making a big purchase, and you just yeah. come home and it's there. Like, well, oh. I will say, I will say, I think that like this whole con- like the reason Alan says he did it is not because he wanted to rush into it. He's like, you know how you hate having to deal with people at the car dealership like i was trying to save you from that and i don't think necessarily that was a bad idea i think he just should have talked to her about it first first of all it is a bad idea do you know why she hates um the reason why she hates going to the dealership where they're like oh little lady is because patronizing men try to take away her agency and so what her husband thought he would do was take away her agency before the dealer could do it and she's like you don't even really get what the problem is and that's what bothers me. It's like, yeah, it's not that, oh, I hate the hassle of having to pick out all these things. It's just that, no, people are shitty and make the whole buying experience shitty. But I, I you know, like crazy, it. too. Go ahead. Is that the, I was just going to say the, the dealership, the guy that they meet with seems like he would be a perfect fit for Amy to go car shopping. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but again, she doesn't have that chance because Alan just made all these assumptions. And I'm not saying that Alan's intentions weren't good. Plenty of people have good intentions. Again, as we just talked, Corey had great intentions. Um, This whole series is about men with good intentions that make innocent mistakes. Exactly. But the women are just casualties of it. I do not like the idea of, and I'm saying this as someone who's dated, if we are discussing a large purchase, or if I've been discussing a large purchase, purchase that is something that i have to deal with i want to factor in all the all the elements there may be things that i don't even really know um before i get there and i look at all my options what will bother me about something but i just need to be a part of it that's something that i want to be a part it's going to be mine i'm gonna have to deal with it every day and to take that away and be like oh i solved it for you it's just like well you didn't now because i didn't get the chance you just make you just made the choice for me yeah yeah exactly um, so again, I just think that buying the car right off the bat was a mistake, but then I will say, going back to what you talked about when we were looking at that, this is a really good car salesman because when they come in and they're like, Oh, we want to return the car, uh, he's like, All right, 
what are we really talking about here? What's the real issue? <laughs> so what's really funny, my main takeaway from that whole like epilogue scene was one, the Matthews desperately need therapy. Oh yeah, of course. Um, and the other thing was that was really funny is that, you know, the the guy's qu- trying to like play therapist and asking, he's like, well, And Alan immediately interrupts her <laughs> and says, how long is this going to take? And if that's not a summary for their entire dynamic, I don't know what is. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I like this. I like that even the car dealer was like, I don't feel like Amy's being heard in this relationship. Let's talk We've been saying that more. for this, this entire series. We've been saying that. So yeah. it's just, yeah. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Um, all right, so a few more things I just wanted to pull out. When Eric and Corey are talking about the situation... I'm glad you're bringing this up, because I had some thoughts on this, too. Yeah, okay, so t- tell me your thoughts. Go for it. Well, my whole thing with this episode, uh, with this uh, conversation that Corey and Eric have is this, you know, Eric's talking to Corey, and he comes to the realization that Sean pawned this other girl off on Corey because he's safe. And I think that this is an idea that really sticks with Corey, because I think we'll see again and again throughout the series, throughout this season, that there's multiple times where Corey wants to be dangerous. He doesn't want to be, like, plain and vanilla or celery. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't want to be celery so badly. And I think this is kind of where that stems from. You know, I agree with you. First of all, I was also laughing at the idea of Corey next to that celery poster. Um, so If I like, could find that celery poster, I'd buy it. Yeah, of course. It's hilarious. I love it. Um... But no, I agree with you. Also, the fact that I was like, damn, Eric. Eric was like, you're like bubble wrap. And I was like, God, y'all are you're not. <laughs> there yeah, are nicer ways yeah. to put this. I, you know what's really funny in the episode? The, uh, Corey's like, oh, I'm dangerous. Or Eric's mentioned something like, oh, grandma thinks you're dangerous. So grandma's still alive. Yeah, grandma's still alive. She's still around kicking. She's somewhere probably hustling. I don't know. We never see her again. So let's, maybe yeah, let's not forget. Here. Grandma killed a man. So <laughs> blatantly <laughs> told the kids. Grandma ain't nothing to fuck with. Um, you know what I also really liked too was that Eric kind of implies Morgan's presence. Where at, without Morgan actually being there when they're talking about the van, they're like, "We'll just hang Morgan out the back, and she'll just have this little dog." <laughs> like, we're not even going to bring Morgan in to make this joke. We're just going to give the joke to Eric. Yeah, I like it as well. Uh, last little bit that I want to point out is, especially when talking about our treatment of women in this episode, uh, there's a scene in Feeney's class where he's talking about Kennedy. And the Cuban Missile Crisis and Kennedy's whole uh, difficult choice to make. And he yeah. goes to Sean and he goes, do you know what that choice was about or something? And Sean was like, his wife or Marilyn? And I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it, again, first of all, it's like, oh, here's a historic fuckboy for you to remember. Um, and then also it's like, it makes sense that Sean, this is the one thing about Kennedy that Sean is aware yeah, of. Yeah, so one thing he... He knows. Um, I actually wanted to give, like, I wrote that as a note to that scene, but it was because I thought that the education worked so well with the storytelling. And whenever Boy Meets World does this really well, like, in the beginning, like, Jonathan's talking about something with Hamlet, and then in Feeney's class, he's talking about the Cuban Missile Crisis, and each time, Corey is able to gain something from that to help him through. And and I really like the idea that, like, hey, there's gems within the education that if you if you pick up on it can apply to your current life. Oh, and yeah, absolutely. Even, even Turner does a fantastic job of modernizing Hamlet. They're like, like... Just talks about it as if it's recapping a TV show versus talking about Shakespeare. And he does a really good job of relating it to the kids, so much so that I think Corey's able to take things from it because of the way it's being taught. He also does a good job wearing those jeans. Oh, no. Oh, no. Turned on by Turner moment. <laughs> Turned on by Turner moment. <laughs> I was like, okay, Mr. Turner. Again, I think the same jeans. I had, like... I'm going to look at all his outfits because I don't think they really change up his wardrobe that much. I think he has like two ties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's on a teacher's salary. Here's the thing. You know, there's truth in art. I get it. But um, 
at the same time, he sat on that desk, and I was like, this is that moment. I'm feeling it, Mr. Turner. I want to know what Turner does on the weekends. Like, he has a motorcycle. Where is he going? He what is plows. he doing? He is just, like, living his best life. He's at the gym, you know, making them little protein shakes. He probably pulls up to, like, his little motorcycle gang. Oh, no, he works on his motorcycle in the garage. And just like a wife beater. I think that <laughs> he does all of those things, but I think he has a classic Italian family that he's very close to. Oh, my God, I he, love it. He refers to his, <laughs> his mother as Ma. Oh, my God, I, I love think, it. <laughs> I think that they have, like, Sunday dinners. I think he, like, maybe even goes to, like, a Catholic church on Sunday mornings. Like, well, I they think have he Sunday is, dinners, and he has yeah. several sisters. Yeah, absolutely. He has a ton of sisters. Oh. That's why he's so sensitive. Yes, I am here for this. I want that Mr. Turner spinoff. <laughs> yeah, I think we just we just flushed out this with the most stereotypical Italian family. Oh, we, we did of. absolutely. I mean, it's completely racist. I apologize, but at the same time, I want what I want. Yeah, we we well, and here's the thing: we just want his character to be a little bit more flushed out, and that definitely happens next season. But it just now, oh my just god, you questions. know what I want more than anything? I want him to have a cousin named Joey who lives in the city. With this, like, friend Chandler. <laughs> yes, he's trying to be an actor. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's what I want. I just want all of that. Let's merge these worlds, guys. Exactly. <laughs> okay, do you have anything else? Anything you want to say? Um, no, I don't. Yeah, short and sweet. <laughs> yeah, we got it. Fuck boys be fucking. <laughs> well, I think also it's really easy to talk about this because, like, the B story was kind of small and the A story took up most of it. So there wasn't a lot of diverting we needed to do. Like, yeah, if you, if you disagree on figuring that out. Yeah, if you disagreed with the way they treated women at all, it's pretty short. It's like. Yeah, it's just, it's, I, I, I mean. I feel like this is also just something we're going to continue to see on the show of just Sean constantly having a different girlfriend and trying to choose between different girls. Like this is just, they're painting a full picture of who Sean is. And that's we're we're starting to see that more and more him dating and becoming more involved with girls, less involved with Corey. Um, you know, they're yeah. Up. I mean, right now, Sean is definitely uh, poor. He is girl crazy and um, his it, it, only real loyalty is to Corey. And he still has family that we know of. Yep. He still, I mean, he lives in the trailer park, but I mean, obviously it's like a fine situation for him so far. He jokes about it. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm interested to see when this is going to start diving in soon. And I think actually it's in a few episodes or maybe towards the end of the season. Um, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, keep a lookout. And we're almost at the midway point. Because we're almost at the midway point in the season. I think next season is the next episode is the halfway point. So Okay. Well, that's cool. Uh, so we already have two spinoff ideas. We want our web series with Joey and Frankie. Absolutely. And we want Mr. Turner's, would it be called? Nah. I can't, you can't call a show turned on by Turner. We need to think of a name for Mr. Turner. Um, as the world turns? No. No. All right. I will not allow it. <laughs> but you know what? I appreciate you for trying. I do. Yeah, um, well, so let's go into the uh, wrap up points. What was your bra moment? I mean, like there are several, but like, okay, so there's one moment where, um, gosh, let me see if I, I I did write this down. Do you want to do yours while I look for mine? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so the only thing that I have is again, the one moment where it's not even that it it it's timeless it was just the one moment where i literally stopped and i was like oh are you kidding me with how much we're going in with this and it was with roy my bro moment is roy and roy being just like the worst of the worst yeah uh, <laughs> and it's like it's sad because that person still exists he just now has like that fade and long hair cut to, um haircut you know what i mean yeah and he wears several necklaces absolutely and drinks kombucha <laughs> oh yeah yeah Roy's the same person. He just looks different. A hundred percent. I can't find the exact quote or whatever it is, but at one point, uh, Sean says to Corey, like, and what if I break it off with Linda? Or St what if I break it off with Stacey and she goes crazy and gets a sex change operation yes! and comes back as a man yes! to, to re exact his revenge? I was like, bruh. <laughs> you can't say that shit. Yes. Thank you so much. I, I, I had... I've forgotten how shocked I was at that moment. 
Uh, and then, again, what if she gets a sex change and comes back as an angry man? What if she goes crazy, flips, and gets a sex change? Because that's the only reason people get sex changes, apparently, is when they go crazy and they flip. Um, what what was comes back as an angry man. About that is Sean goes, I've seen it happen. Where? Where? What? What, what is going? What? <laughs> Sean's lived a crazy life. <laughs> and I think he's referring to the movie Sleepaway Camp, because I think that's the exact plot of it. Is that so the maybe plot he of saw Sleepaway it on Camp? television, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's a huge spoiler for that movie, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually it was, because I have no idea what you're talking about. But it also sounds like it's a really old movie, so deal. Yep. Okay, uh, Feeney taught me. Did anyone teach anyone anything? <laughs> Um, is there, was there a lesson that anyone learned or was there in the lesson that I learned? Because I don't believe anyone learned a lesson on the show itself. <laughs> That's a what very I point. learned is that if you're going to make a big decision, verify with the person, maybe have them come with you before As you make you a big should. purchase. Yeah. And that's something I kind of knew already. Um, so yeah, I guess women, oh, that's the, that's the learn I got that strangely, and I know it's such a foreign concept that when you treat women like people, they, they respond to you. <laughs> and that's the biggest takeaway of this episode, which no one learns, but, but us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Women, women really uh, like having their own agency. Who knew? I don't think women like it when you refer to them as meatloaf or chicken. <laughs> I, that's another thing I picked up on. Um, My assignment. Uh, yeah. My assignment. Yeah. Screw you, Corey. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. And it's, it's one of those things where it gets, it's upsetting. I know girls deal with this all the time of like the nice guy who was like, oh, no, like, what are you talking about? I'm nice. So, like, you, but, you can yeah. feel so much worse because I, I haven't tried to rape you yet. <laughs> and it is that thing of just like, um, a mistake that was an accidental mistake is still a mistake. Yeah. And I think that when, with Corey and just the way that nice guys are kind of portrayed in, in cinema in general, um, it's this whole thing of just like, well, he's a nice guy. He just he just made a mistake. But there can be consequences for that mistake, regardless if it was intended or not. No, no. I love that the girls call it out. The girls like, I don't know which one of you is worse. Uh, and of course, yeah. the boys are like, oh, it's him. Like, he's clearly the worst example. Because Sean's just like, oh, well, he portrayed my fr- our friendship. That's clearly uh, the line. And then Corey's like, oh, well, it was his idea. And he uh, demeans women all the time. So he's the worst one. And the girls are like, no, you're both terrible. <laughs> yeah, because really, like... Sean's kind of like that guy that's like, yeah, I just want to sleep with you, but at least I'm being upfront about it. Exactly. Whereas Corey's kind of like that guy that's just like, oh, those other guys are just fuck boys. I'm not like that. Anyways, want to go back to my place? Like that's <laughs> that's exactly. the dynamic there. Corey's the <laughs> let me explain feminism to you type guy. Sure, let me explain fe- feminism and also like maybe go like maybe blow. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Like that's Corey. <laughs> exactly. That's the that's what I'm saying. Ah, oh, God. Uh, women deserve better <laughs> women all women deserve better the women who watch this episode deserve better <laughs> amy deserves better rest in peace to Pango, wherever the hell she is yeah it's so interesting too that's another thing real fast i want to bring up is that him and i'm sorry him Corey and linda Corey's like oh she's my girlfriend she's yeah my girlfriend literally the day up and at no point in any of these other episodes that Corey's had these one-off encounters with girls, like the girl he asked out in the first episode, the girl that he, like, I don't know, just all these girls that he's been running into, the word girlfriend has never come up before. Yeah, but now he's there. Now he wants a girlfriend. So if, if he wants it, he will have it. And the whole definition of a girlfriend and boyfriend in this age, like, Corey's like, you guys have been together for forever. It's Stacey's like, we dated for four days. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, again, it's one of those things where, like, the girls are, of course, are more mature than the boys. No. Um, but also, I feel like, you know what? This is the reason why I say if Topanga's not in it, it's they're going to treat women terribly, is because I feel that they're like, oh, Topanga deserves better. We're not going to slum her with this terrible. Yeah, don't even there. put her in the episode because there's. <laughs> All she's going to do is immediately talk sense into both Corey and Sean. The story's over. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, Great. What are you giving this? I'm going to give this... 
I'm gonna give it a C. I really just wasn't a fan of it. Yeah, no, I, uh, I we're coming more online. I'm giving it a C. Yeah, it was a C episode. It's good in the comedy, terrible in the lesson, uh, all over the place in the lesson. To be uh, frank, and, I don't know that there is a, a true lesson in this episode. And we have some kind of murky, uh, not even murkiness. We have some unneeded clips of like Frankie and Joey and like all this. It's just yeah, there's filler. Yeah. Okay. Um, homework. Do you have any homework? Yeah, I do actually. So, um, all right. I don't know when this is going to air, but uh, Aretha Franklin just died. Yeah. And uh, this is something that, you know, you and I have been kind of, you know, dealing with this week uh, as the world is. Um, but I've just been diving into her discography and <laughs> God, there are so many gems on here. Like so many like amazing songs and performances that aren't a part of her like traditional greatest hits, you know? Um, so one of my homework assignments is an album that she did called The Girls in Love With You. Uh-huh. Um not a lot on there that people would probably recognize. Um, Son of a Preacher Man is probably the most famous one off of there. Um, but there's a there's a version of Let It Be that she does that I love. There's Ooh. also a song called Dark End of the Street, which I think is just such a beautiful song. Um, but yeah, I just encourage people to check out Aretha's whole... There's another album she has called Sparkle that's amazing as well. Um, yeah, just, just really look at the discography. It's, you know, with Aretha and Stevie and you know, some of these other kind of icons, I feel like a lot of times they get limited to their best of yeah. CD. And, you know, you forget that, like, the worst Stevie Wonder song is still better than most songs. Yeah. And so I think it's just worth diving back into some of that every now and then just to be like, wow, this is kind of overlooked by history. A and few, I felt like Aretha had a lot of those. A few things on that. Uh, one, I will say... It's terrible that we do this as a nation, but because of her death, so many positive things have been coming out. And we never give people their flowers when they deserve them. But anyway, uh, anyway, so go check out uh, Aretha Franklin's discography. And what was the album you said? Um, there was one called Sparkle, and there was another one that I really like called... Uh, uh, the girl's in love with you. The girl's in love with you. Okay, cool. Uh, for my homework assignment, I will be again talking about Tiffany Haddish's book, The Last Black Unicorn. That Hey-o. is, it is hilarious and heartbreaking in all the best ways. It's a quick, quick read, but it's she's really funny and her story is really tragic. So yeah, you. I mean, but also of course it has a kind of positive ending so good on her and, and that's that, that's the great thing about her that's her magic that she's referring to is how she's been able to stay so positive and perpetuate that positivity um despite all of the stuff she's gone through well yeah there's that and then also she's someone who she's determined to still be herself and when you hear, hear her story you understand why but she talks about hollywood and how about how many people tried uh, and still to this day, try to change her, try to make her more acceptable in the Hollywood lifestyle. Um, and again, a lot of it comes from a good place. And she even acknowledges that. But she's like, that's not who I am. And I I only have the energy to be who I am. Sure. Um, I think that's fantastic. Um, but I had already made note to for this to be my homework this week. But reading or sorry watching this episode made me be like i am definitely glad that we're doing this um follow this check out this instagram account called unapologetic supernovas um the spelling's kind of complicated so just look at it i'll make sure to list it in the homework and the links but unapologetic supernovas these uh it's one of those meme accounts that's all about being self-aware about gender issues and women and sexuality and all this other stuff. It's really a great account to just think about common everyday things differently. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I love them. Um, I don't really know much about the people who are behind the account, but I will say that most of their messages and their memes are great. So anyway, check it out. Uh, if you like our podcast, you will like it. Do you have anything else sir? Um, no, that's, that's all I got. That's all I got. Okay. Well, thank you guys for listening to this episode of Bra Meets World. Remember, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube. Make sure you leave us a rating, uh, reach out to us, tell us hi, how you doing. 
at brumbeatsworld at gmail.com. You can find me on Twitter at Extra Siege. That's X-T-R-A-C-E-E-J. And Tonothy Curtis. <laughs> I, I love this. This Tonothy. Is that is that what it is? <laughs> yep, Tonothy Curtis. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's ever referred to me as Tonothy yet. You do it all the time, and I'm for it. Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Um, you can find me at Me um, on Instagram. You can also just find me at the club, Bottle Full of Bub. <laughs> mom, I got the X if you into taking drugs. So, ah, oh, God, feminist, feminist icon, fifty cent. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect way to end the episode, I think. Good snow cap. <laughs> Remember to dream, try, and do what, Tony C. Do good, do so good, guys. All right, later, bros. Later, bro.